students welcome to our channel physics class today we will be doing some bone marker problems and that is related to capacitors capacitors are the devices which are used to store charges and we have gone through the theory we have learned all the details about the capacitors and their different different formulas the principle they work on and their different different combination their energy that everything we have done if you want to go to the details i have given the link below this lecture so you can quickly go to the theory and understand what is the basic concepts so today we will be doing some numericals so let us move on to the numericals so in the first one we are given with two isolated conductors we have two conductors a and b and these two are isolated means they are kept at a distance from each other they are not interacting with each other so say this is our conductor A and this is our conductor B. So this is A and B I am saying. And it is given in the question that A is having a charge. So these two are isolated. Isolated means these are not interacting with each other. That means they are kept at some distance. If these are at some distance, that means they are not interacting with each other. So the question is clear that we have two isolated conductors, first conductor is A, second conductor is B and they are kept at a distance from each other. Now they are joined by a conducting wire. So we have just using a wire we are using and we have joined these two conductors. Now this question asks, first part it asks is, what are the final charges on conductor A and B? Second part is, What is the common potential after joining the conductors? So these are the two parts of the question. So now let us move on to the solution. So whenever you are using conductors and these are joined, these conductors when they are joined, they will definitely act as a capacitor because these are kept in distance and these conductors will act as the plates of the capacitor. So whenever you join them, you have to use the formula that the charge on first conductor after joining. So this is after joining. So we are using dash. So this will be equal to the capacitance on one upon capacitance on one plus capacitance on two and the sum of initial charges. Right? Say so the initial charge before joining these two conductors, the charge on A is Q1 and the charge on B is Q2. And when we join them using a connecting wire, then the charge on A is Q1 dash and the charge on B is Q2 dash. So if you want to calculate Q1 dash, then you have to use C1 upon C1 plus C2, that is the capacitance corresponding to each conductor and that is the sum of initial charges on these conductors. And similarly, you can calculate the charge on the second conductor. Similarly, you have to just replace C1 here with C2, rest everything is same, sum of capacitance and the sum of initial charges. So just remember these two formulas whenever there are two conductors and you join them and they are acting as a capacitor and also the final potential that is the common potential will be the sum of initial charges and divide with the sum of capacitance. Right? So these are the three formulas you have to always remember whenever the join. So using these three formula, we will calculate the answer. Right? So what is given in the question is that this conductor A is having a charge of 6 microcoulomb. So the initial Q1 is having the value of 6 microcoulomb and Q2 is having the value of 3 microcoulomb. So Q1 is equal to 6 microcoulomb and Q2 is equal to 3 microcoulomb. That is given. That is given in your question. Right? What else is given? That when you join them, then the capacitance of first conductor C1 is 3 microfarad. Because this is capacitance, so we will always have the unit as farad. And the capacitance of second conductor is 6 microfarad. That is always in farad because farad is a very large unit. So we use millifarad or microfarad. So these four things are already given to us in the question. So let us go to the question that we have two conductors A and B which are isolated conductors. They are kept at some distance 
and charge on Q1 is 6 microcoulomb and charge on Q2 is 3 microcoulomb and now we join them which will act as a capacitor so the capacitance corresponding to first conductor is 3 microfarad and corresponding to second conductor is 6 microfarad now we have to calculate the charges Q1 dash and Q2 dash after joining this and the common potential so Q1 dash we can quickly use keeping this formula in mind so let us put the value of Q1 dash will be equal to C1 is having the value of 3 then C1 plus C2 is 3 plus 6 these are the given values we are using then Q1 plus Q2 is 6 plus 3 so this is equal to 3 because this 3 plus 6 will cancel out the 3 plus, 3 plus 6 so we have the answer as 3 microcoulomb because this is 3 microcoulomb so here you will have this 3 microcoulomb Similarly, we can calculate Q2 dash. So, Q2 dash will be having the value of C2 upon C1 plus C2. So, this is 6 upon 3 plus 6. And Q1 plus Q2 is again 6 plus 3. So, this 3 plus 6 cancels out of this 3 plus 6. So, you have this as 6 microcoulomb. So, these two formula we have used. Now, use the common potential V we have to calculate. So, this common potential V is equal to Q1 plus Q2 will be 6 plus 3 in microcoulomb and C1 plus C2 will be 3 plus 6 in microfarad. So, these two cancels out with each other and what we have is 1 because this is the common potential. So, it will be in volt. So, this is 1 volt. This is the first part. What are the final charges? Final means after joining our conductors A and B. So, final charges will be Q1 dash and Q2 dash. Just put in the formula all the values and we get the answer as 3 microcoulomb and 6 microcoulomb. And the common potential will come out as 1 volt. So, we have a 3 answer. We calculated them very easily just using the simple formula. So, if you want to take a screenshot, you can take a screenshot of the 3 formulas we have done here. And always keep them in mind whenever you are using or connecting. So, this numerical is now done. So, let us quickly move on to the second numerical. So, here we are given with a circuit. So, I am drawing the circuit that is given in the equation. So, what is asked? We have to find the current in this circuit. So, first of all, we have to calculate what is the current that is flowing in the circuit and the charge and capacitor. So, here you can see a capacitor whose capacitance is given already given to us as 3 parit. It is a very large value, but it is given in the numerical, it is 3 farad, so we will take it as 3 farad. And we have to calculate the charge on this capacitor. So, we have to calculate the charge here on this capacitor. And we are given with a switch here, so this is a switch. So, we have to calculate these two values, that is the current flowing in the circuit and the charge on that capacitor. In two conditions, first condition is just after we close the switch. And second is after a long time. The switch is closed. So, we have to calculate these two values in first condition and these two values in second condition. So, let us quickly move to the solution. What we do? We close the switch. So, if we close the switch, then the potential difference across the capacitor is equal to 0. That means the charge in capacitor is equal to 0. So this is on capacitor. We can put a C here, charge in capacitor. So, when we just close the switch, then the potential difference across the capacitor will be 0. So, the charge in capacitor will be 0. So, it is 0 here. So, that shows that it will be 0 here and this will be 0 here because here are two plates of the capacitor and the potential difference is 0. That means here you will have 0 voltage and here you will have 0 voltage. So, this is 0 volts and this is 0 volts and since these two points, they do not have any voltage source in between. So, this will also be at 0 volts. Right, so these three points are at zero volts, but here we are having a voltage source, we are having a cell of 10 volts, so here the voltage will be 10 volts. Now, here positive, so it will be plus 10 volts here. Right, so now this charging capacitor we have calculated. Now, second, we have calculated the current. So, I is equal to simply use the formula Ohm's law V upon R. So, how much is the voltage? Voltage is 10 volts. And the resistance is 2 ohm within this circuit because when the switch is closed, the circuit is complete. So, we will have this as 10 volts upon 2 ohm. So, that comes out to be 5 ampere. So, in the first case, we have the value of charge and capacitor and the current. Now, in the second case, if you want to move, now in the second case, we 
close the switch and then after a long time we want to find out the charge in capacitor because initially when you close the switch then the capacitor is not charged it has just started charging so the potential across the capacitor will be zero that is the difference that when we close the switch and after a long time of the switch close because when the switch is closed for a long time then the capacitor will charge right so this capacitor starts charging as the time goes on as the time passes by this capacitor is charging and charging and charging so after a long time what happens that the potential difference across this capacitor will be equal to whatever is the charge given here so we are using a tan voltage source of tan volts so here it will be tan volts so the potential difference across the capacitor will be tan volts so in the second condition after a long time of the switch close the potential difference across the plate of the capacitor will be tan volts so we can now calculate the charge in capacitor q is equal to c into v the c is given to us as so c is given to us as 3 farad that is the capacitance of this capacitor so put the value c is 3 and v is the voltage now the potential difference across the plate is tan so the charge will be 30 coulomb because there is no microfarad or no here is voltage and here is farad so it is volts and farad so we will have get a charge in coulomb so 30 coulomb is the answer for the charge in capacitor now to come to the current so there will be steady state current because it capacitor is now fully charged so there will be steady state current and the steady state the current will be zero so that is the answer for the first part that is the a part when we have just closed the switch and this is after a long time when the capacitor is charged so this is the charge in capacitor and this is the value of current so this numerical is now done always keep in mind that when this capacitor is charged the one plate of the capacitor will be positively charged it will have the charges plus 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 here and it will be minus 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 here so that is a potential difference across the capacitor but that happens only after a long time when our capacitor is charged and then in that current the steady current this steady state current the value of i will be zero that corresponds to part b so let us move on to the next numerical so in this numerical we are given with two capacitors so let us first draw these two capacitors so these are the two capacitors given to us this is the first capacitor with the positive charge in the first plate and negative charge in the second plate and these are connected to two points a and p similarly here we are having the second capacitor with charge plus and minus and it is connected to point c and point d so these are the two capacitors whose capacitance is given to us for the first capacitor it is 2 microfarad and for the second capacitor it is 3 microfarad So the capacitance of both are known to us, and here we have a potential difference of 20 volts, whereas in the second case we have a potential difference of 10 volts. So that is already given in the circuit drawn. That is given in the numerical. Now what is given to us? That if we connect A with C and B with B, so C is connected to A and B is connected to B. That is the way we have to connect. so if we connect them then we have to calculate two things first is what is the value of charge q that flows in the circuit after joining so after joining these two points what is the charge that flows in the circuit so let us go to the solution Because so here we are given with the two separate capacitors, and it is given in the numerical, given in the question that you have to join A with C and B with D. So let us draw this circuit. Then only we can calculate the charge that is flowing. Okay, so this is the circuit we have drawn after joining them. So what we need to calculate, we need to calculate the charge that will flow. So when these are not joined, in this case, what is given to us is the value of C is given to us, and this is B is given to us. so we can calculate the charge q before joining them so let us say that before joining these two capacitors the charge in first capacitor is say q1 so q1 we can calculate as c1 into v1 the value of c1 is given to us as 2 microfarad so put the value 2 microfarad and this is multiplied with v1 that is 20 volts 
So we get the charge as 40 and this micro here, so 40 micro gram that is in the first capacitor. Similarly, we can calculate the charge in the second capacitor. That is C2 into V2. The value of C2 is 3 microfarad and the value of V2 is 10 volts. So we simply get this as 30 microcoulomb. So this is just before joining the charges on each capacitor. Now after joining, we can use a formula just we have used in the previous numericals. So Q1 dash is equal to C1 upon C1 plus C2 multiplied with Q1 plus Q2. So now we have all the values. C1 is having the value of 2 microfarad. And this is 2 plus 3. And this is Q1 plus Q2. So 40 plus 30 is 70 microcoulomb. So this comes out to be 3, 5. This will become 5. And 5, if you cancel 5 with this, then you have 14. And 14 multiplied by is 28. So what you have is 20. So this is in microcoulomb and this is in microcoulomb. And these two are in. So this will be 28 microcoulomb. Similarly, we can calculate Q dash. Q dash is similar to C2. Replace the C1 with C2. Then C1 plus C2 and Q1 plus Q2. So, rest all values are same. Only C1 is replaced with C2. So, C2 is having the value of 3 microfarad. So, this is 3 upon 2 plus 3 and Q1 plus Q2 is again same, 70. So, this cancels out with 5. This is 5. So, this cancels out and then 14. So this will be 42 microfarad. So these are the new charges after joining them. So here we go. So here for the first capacitor, it will be having the charges of 28 microfarad. So this is plus 28 and minus 28. So this will be having 28 microfarad here and 28 microfarad here. And for the second capacitor, it is 42 microcoulomb. So this is 42 microcoulomb. Here you can write down plus 42 microcoulomb and here minus 42 microcoulombs. So that we have already calculated. Now we have calculated. Now we want to calculate the charge that will flow. So the charge that will flow in the circuit is. So here it is. So let us say. So the potential of B and D is 0. So these two points are at 0 potential. So here we can write down that here the potential is 0. So if the potential at point B is 0 volts, then B and D are connected. So this D will also be at 0 volts. And the common potential on these capacitors is V. The common potential, this common potential V is equal to Q1 plus Q2 upon C1 plus C2. So this is equal to the value of Q1 is 40 plus 30 upon C1 plus C2 if you see. And this is equal to 2 plus 3. So this is 70 upon 5. So V is equal to 14 volts. Right, so that is the common potential. So the charge flow Q will be 14 minus 28. So this is equal to 12 microgram. So this is how we have calculated each value and this numerical is now done. So in this numerical we are given with the three capacitors C1, C2, C3 of 2 microfarad, 3 microfarad and 6 microfarad and as you can see in the circuit these are connected in series and they are finally connected to a voltage source of 30 volts. So that is given to us in the numerical. Now we have to calculate three things. First is the charge that will flow through the battery or through the cell that is a voltage source. Second thing we have to calculate the potential energy in 3 microfarad capacitor. And third thing we have to calculate is is the total potential energy that is U total I'm writing that is the total potential energy in capacitors. So these are the three things we have to calculate for the above circuit. So let us go to the solution. See if you see the circuit first you can see that these three capacitors C1, C2 say this is C1, this is C2 and this is C3. 
So these are the three capacitors that are connected in series. So first of all, we calculate the equivalent capacitance. So since these are in series, so the equivalent capacitance will be 1 upon C1 plus 1 upon C2 plus 1 upon C3. Now put the value of all these three. So what we get is, this is 1 upon 2 plus 1 upon 3 plus 1 upon 6. So if you take the 6 here, then this is 3 plus 2 plus 1. So that comes out to be 1. That makes the equivalent capacitance will be equal to 1 microfarad. So that is the equivalent capacitance we have calculated. Now next thing is, it is a charge that will flow through the battery. So Q is equal to CV. That is the formula we know because these are in series. And we have calculated the equivalent capacitance. So put the value of equivalent capacitance that is 1 microfarad. And the voltage, it is only single voltage source of 30 volts. So multiply it with 30 volts. So what you have is 30 microcoulomb. So the charge that will flow through this battery will be 30 microcoulomb. So part A we have done. The answer is 30 microcoulomb. The charge that will flow through the battery. Part B, potential energy of 3 microfarad capacitors. Potential energy is given with the symbol capital U. And we know that formula for potential energy is Q square upon 2C. You can refer to the lecture. Or you can just remember it that the potential energy is having the formula Q square upon 2C. So Q square is the charge, square of the charge. So what is the charge on capacitor of 3 microfarad? If this is the capacitance, then you have to calculate the charge. So Q is equal to C into V. So C is 3 and voltage is 30. So this is so we have just calculated the charge that is 30 microcoulomb. So this will be 30 multiplied by 30 upon 2 and the capacitance is 3 microfarad. So that comes out to be this 3 cancels out with this and this is 50. So this is 150 answers. This is in microcoulomb. This is also in microcoulomb and this is in microfarad. So this will be microjoule. Right? Because there are 2 micros here. This is 2 volts and this is again 3 microfarad. So one micro will cancel out for this and you have the resultant as 150 microjoule is the energy corresponding to the capacitor of 3 microfarad. Now part C, we have to calculate the total potential energy. So the total potential energy is U total, but the formula will remain the same. This is again Q square upon 2C. So use the formula, the charge we have calculated, that is the equivalent charge. So this is equal to 30 multiplied with 30 upon 2. Here we will have to, here we will use the equivalent capacitance because here we are calculating corresponding to a single capacitor of 3 microfarad but here we have to calculate the potential energy that is the total potential energy so we have to take the equivalent capacitance, right? So this is 30 multiplied with 30. So this comes out to be 30 multiplied with 30 upon 2 and the equivalent capacitance is 1 microfarad. So that gives us this 2, 15, 15, 3, 5, 5. So that comes out to be 450 microjoule. That is the total potential energy. So this numerical is now done. And what you have to remember if you are using or performing such type of numericals, then always is that if you are using the combination of capacitors and you have to calculate the total potential energy, and this U combination will be always equal to the charge you have calculated. And two here you have to use the C equivalent that is the equivalent capacitor capacitance you have to use and if you are calculating for the individual capacitor you have to use the corresponding capacitance but if you are using combination and overall total potential energy you are calculating then you have to use Q square upon 2 and this is the equivalent capacitance. Right? Hope you got it and you will do it all right. So let us move to the next one. So in this numerical, we are given with the two capacitors. This is capacitor 1, which is having a capacitance of 1 microfarad, what is 20 volts. These are the two plates with positive and negative polarity, and these are connected to two points A and B. Similarly, this is the second capacitor of capacitance 2 microfarad with a voltage of 15 volts, positive and negative polarity, and connected to the point C and D. So we, overall, we have these two capacitors. Um, they are charged to different, different voltages. This is up to 20 volts, and this is up to 15 volts. So these two are given in the numerical and next thing is given to the numerical that if we join point C with point B. So here we, we have joined this capacitor of 1, this is the C1, so this is our C1 we have joined here and this is our C2 that is the second capacitor we have joined this point C to B 
and then we have connected them to a common voltage source that is of 30 volts uh, you can call it a battery here it is shown as a cell but it is of 30 volts and d is connected to the negative terminal of the battery and a is connected to the positive terminal of the battery then we have to find out the final charges on both the capacitors say the initial charges on capacitor 1 and 2 are q1 and q2 these are the capacitors these are the initial charges that means before joining it is q1 and q2 See the charge here is q1 and charge here is q2 and after joining these two the charge is q1 dash and q2 dash final charge so say it is q1 dash after joining and this is q2 dash after joining so we have to calculate the value of this q1 dash and q2 dash so let us go to the solution right so first we can easily calculate this q1 and q2 before joining because q is equal to cv so q1 is equal to c1v and q2 is equal to c2v so put the value c1 is 1 microfarad and this is multiplied with 20 volts so this is equal to 20 microcoulomb because this is microfarad here and c2v is 2 microfarad multiplied with 15 volts so this is 30 microcoulomb so 20 microcoulomb and 30 microcoulomb are the initial charges on these capacitors now q1 dash and q2 dash we have to calculate here so let us say that this voltage source this petri volt is transferring the charge q say this is the charge just transferred q we are considering so say q is a charge so q charge is transferred to this first capacitor and similarly it is transferred to the second capacitor so here all it is having the charge of 20 microcoulomb and q more charge is added so this will become 20 plus q right so this is with the positive polarity and this plate is with the negative polarity this is plus and this is minus so this is with the negative polarity so this is minus again charge q is added similarly the second capacitor is having a charge of 30 microcoulomb so 30 and q more is added so this is 30 plus q this q is adding because of this voltage source now with the negative polarity again minus then charge 30 plus q is added so after we join them these are the charges which will be the final charges on capacitor a and capacitor this is the final charges on capacitors c1 and capacitor c2 so now we can apply Kirchhoff's law because the value of q is unknown to us small q is not known to us so we apply Kirchhoff's law because Kirchhoff's law you can easily apply whenever you are falling into a problem or whenever you are facing that you are having a complex circuit then this Kirchhoff's law will help you out solve it very easily so we can use here the voltage law because here there is the voltage source so we can easily apply the voltage right so here we are having the charges this and here we are having the voltage so this charge we can convert to the voltage and then we can take this closed loop this whole circuit as a closed loop and then we can apply Kirchhoff's voltage law so if we go we start from point A then we can calculate it over the first capacitor it is 20 plus Q only the difference in the polarity so you can write down 20 plus Q that is the charge if the charge and if we divide it with the capacitance then we will have the voltage so capacitance here is 1 microfarad so divide it with 1 so C upon so Q upon C will be the voltage so that is the voltage corresponding to the first capacitor now if we go for the second capacitor then this is 30 plus Q and divide it with the capacitance it is 2 here so divide it the capacitance 2 then you can take either ways if you take this as positive suppose I take this as positive then I have to take this as negative minus 30 is equal to 0 or you can take the alternate also if you take these two as negative then you can write down minus 20 plus q upon 1 and minus 30 plus q upon 2 plus 30 equals to 0 so you can take either ways this two so this equation may also be written as this way and minus 20 plus q upon 1 then minus 30 plus q upon 2 plus 30 equals to 0 right so these are the two ways you can add on the equation if you remember the Kirchhoff's law in this way you can do this if you remember the Kirchhoff's law 
the other way you can do is this but the equation are basically same because they both are equal to zero so let us say i take this one or this one the resultant will be same that if you do the total then this is Forty plus two q plus thirty plus q is equal to sixty because this is minus sixty. It will go to this side. That will be plus sixty. So that means three q is equal to minus seventy. If it go to this side, this will be minus ten. So three q is equal to minus ten. And that implies q is equal to minus 10 upon 3 microfilm. This is a charge. So this is microfilm. Similarly, if you are continuing with this equation, you will get the same answer that q is equal to minus 10 upon 3 microfilm. So you can use either of these equations. So finally, we have our charge as minus 10 upon 3 microfilm. So now we can talk about just put the value of q and we will have the answer. So for the first capacitor. So for the first capacitor C1, we are having the charges as 20 plus Q plus 20 plus Q and minus 20 plus Q. So put the value of 20 plus Q. This is equal to 20 minus 10 upon 3. So this comes out to be 60 minus 10. So that is 50 upon 3 microcoulomb for the first capacitor. And for the second capacitor again, this charge is 30 plus Q with positive and negative polarity. So 30 plus Q will give us as 30 minus 10 upon 3. So this will be 90 minus 10. So this is 80 upon 3 micro coulomb. This should be coulomb here because this is charge. This is micro coulomb. This is micro coulomb. So we have the two charges as 50.3 microcoulomb. Similarly, if we calculate for C2, then this is 30 plus Q with negative and positive polarity. So this is 30 minus 10 upon 3. So if you calculate, this is 90 minus 10 upon 3. So that is 80 upon 3 microcoulomb. So this is the charge in first capacitor and this is the charge in second capacitor. So for capacitor C1, the charge Q and dash is 50.3 microcoulomb, and for capacitor C2, the final charge Q2 dash is 80.3. So we got the answer, and we can put the values, and we can put the values over here. That this will be 50.3 with positive polarity, and 50.3 with negative polarity, and here will be 80.3 with positive polarity, and 80.3 with negative polarity. So we have calculated the final charges Q and dash and Q to dash. And this numerical is now done. Hope it is clear to you. Now let us move to the next one. So in this numerical, we are given with three capacitors, and the capacitance of these three capacitors is already given to us. For the first one, it is given as one microfarad. For the second capacitor, it is two microfarad. And for the third capacitor, it is 3 microfarad. So each is having 1, 2, and 3 microfarad. These are the three capacitors, and these are connected to a source. What is source? What is source is written as tan volts. So if these are two parallel lines, that represents a capacitor. And if there are, this shows positive and negative, then this is a voltage source, this is a cell. So capacitance of three capacitors is given to us, and voltage is given to us. So first of all, what we have to do, we have to first of all calculate what is the charge that it flow from the battery. So what is the value of Q that flow from the battery. Second thing we have to calculate is total energy stored in the capacitors. And third we have to calculate the potential energy in 3 microfarad capacitor. So these three things we have to calculate using this given circuit. So let us go to the solution. Now first of all we write down what is given to us. 
so we are given with three capacitors whose capacitance are one microfarad two microfarad and three microfarad so that is what is given to you what else is given to us that is a voltage source which is having a voltage of three volts so that is what is already given to us now we have to calculate q the value of q so just look at this c is given v is given so we can calculate q very easily because the formula of q is q is equal to the formula for q is q is equal to c into v so if you write on the value then q is equal to c1v plus c2v plus c3v so this c1 plus c2 plus c3 because v is common for all these so 10 multiplied with voltage tan so what we get is the 6 6 multiplied with tan is 60 microcoulomb so that is the charge that is the charge that will flow from the battery why we have taken c as 1 plus 2 plus 3 because these three capacitors they are in parallel so the equivalent capacitance will be c1 plus c2 plus c3 and q is equal to c into v so put the value of c equivalent and multiply it with v so what we have is 60 microcoulomb the charge that will flow from the battery so first part here is done now let us move to the solution of second part what is this total energy stored in the capacitor potential energy is represented with the symbol u and if you are calculating the total just write down the suffix total so that is the total potential energy so total potential energy is half cv squared we write it as q square upon 2c or you can write it as half cv square it is one and the same thing so this is half and the value of c equivalent will be here and then v square because this is the total potential energy so always we will take the equivalent capacitance so this is half multiplied with equivalent capacitance is 1 plus 2 plus 3 so this is 6 and the voltage is 10 so the square of 10 so this is half multiplied with 6 and multiplied with 10 square so this 2 cancels out so it will be 3 here and the result is 300 and since this is the potential energy so this will be micro joule why this is micro because this is in micro clown because this is in microfarad and these two are in volts so what we got is a micro joule so second part is done here what is the total potential energy and if you want to calculate the potential energy in 3 microfarad capacitor that is our capacitor say we call it as c1 this is c2 and this is c3 that is what we are considering here so we have written this in the diagram also this is c1 c2 and c3 so for c3 potential energy is c3 that is potential energy in the c3 capacitor 3 this will be written as half cv square again the formula is same but if it is total then we have to take the equivalent capacitance and if it is for a particular capacitor then you have to take the capacitance of that capacitor only right so this is half is half capacitance will be of this capacitor for which we have to calculate the potential energy so this is simply 3 microfarad and v is same because v is done volts that is the source so this cancels out here it will be 5 15 and 15 multiplied with 10 is 150 so this is 150 micro joule that is a potential energy corresponding to the 3 microfarad capacitor so third part is now also done so we can say that all the three parts are done so this numerical is now what you have to keep in mind the point you have to keep in mind is that you are calculating the total potential energy then you have to take into account the equivalent capacitance and if you are calculating potential for a particular capacitor then you have to take the capacitance of that capacitor only right so let's move to now in this numerical we are given with a circuit so here also we are having the three capacitor like the previous numerical but two are in parallel and the one are is and the one is in series so let us draw the circuit diagram so here the first capacitor is having the capacitance of 1 microfarad second is 2 microfarad and third is having of 6 microfarad so these are the three capacitors they are connected to a source of 30 volt voltage and we have to find out the charge on 6 microfarad capacitor what is the charge on 6 microfarad capacitor and the charge on 1 microfarad capacitor so these two values we have to calculate and this is a circuit diagram that's given to us 
So let us quickly move to the solution, how we can solve this. So you can write out the solution. So it is more over like the previous numerical, but in this, what is the difference that these two are in parallel, but the third one is in series. So let us say this is a capacitor C1, this is C2, and this is C3. So we will first of all write down what is given to us. C1 is having capacitance of 1 microfarad, C2 is given with 2 microfarad, and C3 is given with 6 microfarad. And now we can, this is what is given to us. And also a voltage source of 30 volts is given to us. Right? Now what we can do, because we know this combination, two of these two are in parallel and the third was in the series. So we can calculate the equivalent capacitance. These two are in parallel. That means the resultant of these two will be simply C1 plus C2. So that is 1 plus 2 is 3 microfarad. So instead of these two, we can write down as 3 microfarad. If I draw this diagram again to make it more easier. So these two capacitors C1 and C2 can be replaced with a single capacitor of capacitance 3 microfarad because 1 plus 2 is 3. And in series, we are having one more capacitor which is already of 6 microfarad. So this is C1 plus C2 and this is C3. So now instead of 3, we are having only two capacitors in the modified diagram and the voltage source is of 30 volts. So 3 microfarad is connected to the positive and 6 microfarad is connected to the negative of the battery. Right? So now we have to first of all calculate the equivalent capacitance. So these two are in series, 3 microfarad and 6 microfarad are in series. So we can write down 1 upon C equivalent is equal to 1 upon 3 plus 1 upon 6. And if we add these two, we will have this as 2 and this is 1. So 3 upon 6, that means 1 upon 2. So we have the equivalent capacitance as 2 microfarad. Right? So first of all, we have covered the equivalent capacitance and now we have to calculate the charge which is flowing through the cell. Charge is represented with the symbol Q and through the cell if you want to write down. Then Q is equal to CV and if you go for the voltage this is 30 volts and if you go for the capacitance this is 2 microfarad equivalent so CV that means 2 into 30 that gives us 60. So this is 60 microcoulomb that is the charge that will flow through the cell. Now we have to calculate the charge on 3 microfarad capacitor then it will be equal to the charge on 6 microfarad capacitor. Why the charge will be same? Because these two are in series. So what is the amount of current that is flowing through now will be same because these two are in series so the current will be same. And if the current is same, then the charge will be same. And how we reach to this conclusion, if you want to go to the lectures, you just quickly have a view of the theory and the link for the lecture I have given below this lecture. So you can view that and you can understand when these are in series, then the current is same. And if the current is same, that means the charge is same. So the charge in 3 microfarad, that is a combination of 1 and 2 in parallel, will be same to the charge of 6 microfarad capacitor. And that will be equal to 60 microcoulomb that is flowing through the cell because of this circuit combination. These will combine like this. So the charge here will be equal to the charge here. Right? So we have calculated. And we can also calculate one more thing. Potential difference across 3 microfarad capacitor. So if you calculate the potential difference across so voltage, if you calculate that will be so the voltage if you calculate that will be Q upon C. So the Q is 60 microcoulomb and the capacitance you are taking. So the charge is 60 microcoulomb and the capacitance we are taking is 3 microfarad. So that gives us the potential difference V is equal to 20 volts. So the voltage here for the 3 microfarad capacitor is 20 volts. Now, if you know the voltage here, then this is a combination of 1 and 2 in parallel. So, whenever these two are in parallel, that means the voltage on both is same. So, the charge on 1 microfarad capacitor will be equal to C into V. So, C is 1 microfarad and multiply with 20 volts. 
So what we get is 20 microcoulomb. So that is we have done the second part of this question because whatever as was that what will be the charge on 6 microfarad capacitor and what is the charge on 6 microfarad capacitor and what is the charge on 1 microfarad capacitor. So on the 6 microfarad capacitor we get a 60 microcoulomb is the charge and for the 1 microfarad capacitor we get the 20 microcoulomb is the charge. So this numerical is now done. And what is the point you have to remember for this numerical that whenever the capacitor are connected in parallel than their voltage is same that is how we have calculated the charge on one microfarad capacitor because the voltage is 20 volts for 3 microfarad which is a combination on 1 and 2 microfarad in parallel so whenever two capacitors are in parallel then their voltage is same and if these are in series that means the current is same that means the value of charge is same so to calculate the first part we have used that the charge is same and for the second part we have used that the voltage is same. So these are the two basics of physics which we apply and we have easily done this numerical. So let us move to the next one. So what is given in the numerical we are given with a dielectric slab. whose thickness is small t and area is capital A and it is inserted between the plates of a parallel plate capacitor whose area is A and the distance between the plates is small t. And this D is greater than the thickness of the dielectric slab. Then we have to find out the capacitance of the system. So first of all let us draw what you have to do. So we have to draw a parallel plate capacitor. So this is any parallel plate capacitor. And so each plate is having an area of A that is given to us. So this is A, this is also A, this is the area of this plate and this is the area of this plate and the distance between these is small d. The distance between the parallel plate of the capacitor is small d is given to us. And between these we insert a dielectric. So this is a dielectric slab whose thickness is small t. whose area is also A and because it is a dielectric slab so say the dielectric constant is K we are using the K as a dielectric constant and since the charge is distributed over here so we can write on the surface charge density So the surface charge enters density is sigma here and sigma here. So plus sigma and minus sigma is the surface charge density. If you want to know what is surface charge density and when, whenever there is a continuous charge distribution, then how we write on sigma, then you can quickly refer to a lecture. The link is given below. But as for now, this is a parallel plate capacitor having the cross section of each plate as A. Having the area of each plate as A and the distance is D and there is a dielectric medium of dielectric constant K whose thickness is T and the area is A. So this is the diagram we have drawn for a parallel plate capacitor with a dielectric medium. Now it is given that this D is greater than T that means the distance between these two plates is greater than the thickness T. So there is some space left here, here is some space and there is some space. So first of all we can write on the capacitance. So C is equal to Q upon T. 
the formula of capacitance and since it is having a continuous charge distribution so q is equal to sigma a sigma is the surface charge and a is the area upon v now we want to calculate this v because the formula is the electric field e is equal to v upon d so from here we can calculate the value of v and this e is equal to sigma upon epsilon on between the plates of a parallel plate capacitor so that gives us the value of v from these two terms we can calculate the value of v so v is equal to sigma d upon epsilon right so v is equal to sigma d upon epsilon naught now we are having here the dielectric medium with the thickness t so we can say that this space we can take the thickness as maybe t1 and this is t here and between this and this we can take it as t2 right so we are having three areas here thickness t1 then thickness t and then thickness t2 so this potential we can write down easily for these three areas so just keep the value of d different different values of thickness so this will be sigma because this is the formula for the electric field between the plates of the capacitor so between the plates of the capacitor we are having three thickness without medium t1 then dielectric medium t and again without medium is t2 so v will be the sum of sigma t1 upon epsilon naught first term for the first area then sigma t upon k epsilon naught k is here because t thickness is with the dielectric medium so this is k epsilon naught and again sigma t2 upon epsilon naught because it is again no medium no dielectric medium so a total potential will be the sum of these three terms so in these three terms we can take sigma upon epsilon naught as common then what is left is this is t1 then this is t2 and this is t with having the dielectric constant in like this t upon k now what is if you do that if you do t1 plus t2 plus t then the total is d because here you can see the distance between two plates is d and here the distance we have divided into three regions depending on the medium so the total distance between two plates d is equal to t1 plus t2 plus d so from here you can calculate the value of t1 plus t2 so t1 plus t2 will be d minus t very simple to calculate so here we can substitute d minus t because if you are having these three unknown terms it will be really difficult to calculate so we can write this t1 plus t2 in terms of t so t1 plus t2 is d minus t plus t upon t right so this equation reduces to this form again we have the formula for voltage v is equal to q upon c because c is equal to q upon v or we can have v is equal to q upon c um, this is again q is equal to sigma a so sigma a upon c so this is again formula we can write down for voltage so put this value sigma a upon c here and this is equal to sigma a upon c right so this sigma cancels out because you have to calculate the capacitance of the system so we are reducing this formula in terms of capacitance so sigma cancels out here and what we have is if you take c here then this will be c is equal to sigma is already cancels out epsilon naught will go with a so this is epsilon naught a divided with d minus t plus t upon k or this may again be written as this is equal to epsilon naught a divided with t minus t is common 1 minus 1 upon k so this is the value of capacitance for this type of system so this numerical is now done so just use this small small formula and pay attention to what we have calculated like in this we have to calculate the capacitance for capacitors e is equal to sigma upon epsilon naught and here we are having three mediums so we divided into three parts and this is the voltage we are writing down here and since this voltage finally we have to reach to the capacitance so we can use the formula of voltage in terms of capacitance so we'll have that final term in c and that comes out to be this so this is the easiest way you can calculate such numericals let us quickly move to the next one so in this numerical we are having a dielectric medium of constant k
hard it is slipped between the plates of a parallel plate capacitor in half of the space. It is shown in the figure and it is given that if the capacitor having the capacitance as C, then what will be the new capacitance between A and B? So let us draw the diagram so the picture will be clear to you. This is a parallel plate capacitor and it is having the area of each plate is A. And here we are drawing these two points as A and B. So in the half of this, there is a dielectric medium with dielectric constant K. So this is how we can show that initially there is no dielectric medium. It is simply a parallel plate capacitor having the capacitance of C and these uh, distance between these two plates. And now we have inserted any dielectric with a dielectric constant K which is between the half of the area. And these are the two points A and B. So we have to calculate the new capacitance between point A and point B. Uh, so it may be uh, like it may be a full answer question or it may be objective type questions then you may be given with certain objective options like it is again C by 2 it is reduced to half or it be reduced to half with an electric constant in upon and or it may be uh, draw electric constant 1 plus k multiplied with capacitance c by 2 or it may be the fourth option is the electric constant 1 plus k is multiplied with 2 upon c this is the reverse of this so these are the four options and you have to choose the correct one out of these four so either you have to simply calculate this or you are given with the options so that is one and the same thing. We have to finally reach to the answer and then we can quickly tick what is the right answer. So only one of these four is right. So here we are having uh, one with no medium and one with dielectric constant K. So we can consider the system. It will be equivalent to two capacitors in parallel. So these are the two capacitors in parallel. And if we have divided a single capacitor into two parts and this area is A, so this will be obviously A by 2 here and A by 2 here. So this area is divided into half and these two are in parallel. So if you want to calculate the equivalent capacitance, then that will be because these two are in parallel. So for the parallel combination, it is C1 plus C2. So simply we have used the formula for parallel combination of two capacitors. So C equivalent is equal to C1 plus C2. Now we know that the formula for capacitance is epsilon naught A upon D and this you should always remember and how you reach to this formula then you can quickly have a look to your lecture the references given below this lecture then you can find out what how we got the capacitance of this as epsilon naught A upon D. So this is the formula we are using here in this numerical. So simply use this formula put the value. So for the first part where we are not having any dielectric medium for the area A by 2. So this is epsilon naught, then area is reduced to A by 2 since half of the area we are using without the medium and the distance is D because here the distance is D. This we can say uh, this is the distance between the two plates. So D is same. We have not done this as half otherwise we would have taken this D by 2. So this area D is same. This distance D is same and this area is reduced to half. So epsilon naught A by 2 divided with D. This is our C1 and C2 is again epsilon naught. Area is again A by 2 and this is again D but this is multiplied with the dielectric constant K. Because whenever you are having a dielectric medium then C is equal to epsilon naught K A upon D. Right? So from this we have written the first term and from this we have written the second term. So this is the equivalent capacitance of these two parallel plate capacitor which are in parallel to each other. So just what we can take as common, this is epsilon naught A upon 2D we can take as common in these two terms then first term we are left with 1 and second term we are left with K. So this is our equivalent capacitance epsilon naught A upon 2D 1 plus K and this epsilon naught A upon D now the area is A by 2. So this is the capacitance of the second capacitor if you look at this. 
so this is equal to this accelerant a upon d is the capacitance so is the formula if you use so in place of this you can write it down as c in place of this quantity you can write it down as c so this is c by 2 if you have to simply solve this you can write on the answer here and if you have to go to the options and option is in term of c by 2 or c by 2 or 2 by c so simply substitute this epsilon at a upon d as c so this is c by 2 and 1 plus k right so which option is correct our option c is correct right c by 2 1 plus k is the right answer and we are done with this numerical so always draw the diagram and calculate which things are halved and which are not like d is not halved but this area is halved and these two are in parallel so simply by using these three logic we have arrived to this relation which is our correct answer that is option c and this numerical we have done so let's go to the next one so here in this numerical we are given with this circuit diagram where we are having a parallel plate capacitor and again we are having two points a and b so you can see these two will be in parallel with respect to these two points a and b it is having the surface charge density sigma 1 for the first half and sigma 2 for the second half and cross section area here is a1 and cross section area here is a2 and the distance is d so that is what is given in the numerical and we have to find out the capacitance between a and b so what will the capacitance between a and b that we have to calculate and these are the two dielectric slabs first one is having the dielectric constant of k1 second slab is having the dielectric constant of k2 and which are inserted half half between the parallel plate capacitor and this total area is a1 plus a2 gives the total area a of the parallel plate capacitor that is what is given to us and this is what we have to calculate the capacitance between point a and b so let us move to the solution Simply the formula we have to use is C is equal to epsilon naught A upon D. And if it is with a dielectric medium, then C becomes C is equal to epsilon naught K A upon D. And this is the formula we will be using to solve this numerical. So there are the two regions. For first region, this region with the dielectric constant K1, we can write on capacitance C1 is equal to epsilon naught K1 A by 2. This is epsilon naught K1 A1 upon d and similarly if you want to write down c2 c2 is equal to epsilon naught k2 a2 upon d so this is directly we have tried on using the formula again we know that the electric field between the plates of the capacitor is sigma upon epsilon naught and this is equal to v upon d so for first one we can write it down as sigma 1 upon k1 epsilon naught because if it is having dielectric medium then k will also be here so this is sigma 1 upon k1 epsilon naught so and similarly so this is even electric field for the first region similarly we can write on electric field for the second reason it is again sigma upon k epsilon naught so this is e is equal to v upon d electric field is equal to v upon d so just put the value for the second region it is second Reason so sigma 2 then k2 epsilon naught. So from here and here we can calculate the value of sigma 1 and sigma 2. So if you do the cross multiplication sigma 1 will be equal to k1 epsilon naught v upon d. This we got from these two terms. So sigma 1 if you calculate then k1 epsilon naught will go here and d will be in upon so sigma 1 is equal to from these two terms sigma 1 is equal to this and from these two terms we can write on sigma 2 so sigma 2 is equal to k2 epsilon naught v upon d so we have both the surface charge density this and this so we have covered the capacitance for region 1 and region 2 and the surface charge density for region 1 and region 2 Now, if you want to write down the capacitance between A and B, so this will be so C is equal to Q upon V, and since these two are in parallel, so the charge will add up like this Q1 plus Q2 upon V. C is equal to Q1 plus Q2 upon V. Now put the value of Q1 and Q2 because Q is equal to sigma A, so Q1 will be sigma 1 A1 and Q2 will be sigma 2 A2 and v is the potential difference so v is in volts now just substitute the value of sigma from this equation so this is k1 epsilon naught v 
बी ए वन अपॉन डी then this is divided with v and plus k2 epsilon naught v a2 upon d and this divided with v so v cancels out in these two terms and what we are left with so after canceling canceling out v we have capacitance between point a and b as k1 epsilon naught a1 upon d since there is no more here it is cancelled plus k2 epsilon naught a2 upon d and this is equal to c1 plus c2 right so this is a value corresponding to c1 and this is the value corresponding to c2 So if you are having two dielectric medium, so if you are having two dielectric medium, then the equivalent capacitance between point A and B will be the sum of C1 plus C2, and this will be the value of C1, and this will be the value of C2. This you can see from this equation. So again, we have used a simple formula for the capacitance, and also we have used a formula for the electric field in terms of the surface charge density and dielectric constant. And since these two are in parallel, so we are getting the answer as C1 plus C2. So using these three formulas, you can easily write down the answer and this numerical. and this numerical is now done so either you are given with the option or you are given it as to solve this question you can do it very well so what we conclude that if you are given with two points a and b one side is k1 other side is k2 then for these points a and b it will act as two capacitors which are in parallel but the only difference is area a1 and a2 here if it is not even in a2 you have to take it half but if it is not half it is like in this question is given as a1 and a2 so our total capacitance will be the sum of c1 plus c2 that is what we have concluded point from this numerical and we have easily done up with this numerical you can try more such numericals which is based on the capacitor and combination of capacitors or capacitors with some dielectric medium only these formulas you have to use no new formula will be there so you can try those numericals try a number of numericals you can can do because that will help you a lot in understanding the concept as well as preparing for your all the competitive exam and then the final will be more clear to you and you can do it more easily so all the best from my side keep on doing and whenever you are stuck up just look up to the numericals we have solved and i'm sure you will be able to do them well so that's all for today and if you like this lecture like the way we solve the numericals like the theory then like and share and subscribe to our channel physics class so that you can receive notifications for more such lectures on the theory as well as on numericals thank you keep on watching